Hello, I'm Helen Bradley. Welcome to this video tutorial. In this tutorial, I'm going to show you how you can show a before and after of an edited image using an animated GIF that you create in Photoshop. Before we start this video tutorial on creating an animated GIF, let's see what it is that we're trying to achieve. What I'm going to do is use an animated GIF to showcase the before and after on an image that I have processed. And we're going to see how we could take the before and after image and assemble them inside Photoshop to create this sort of animated GIF effect. To create my animated GIF, I've opened the two images, the before and after image in Photoshop. Now these can have been edited in any program at all. I happen to have edited these in Lightroom, but they could have come from Photoshop. I have the two images so that I can see each of them because I'm going to drag and drop between them. I'm going to target the text tool and I have 80 point type. I'm just using Arial and we're going to be typing in white. So I'm just going to click and type before. and then click to confirm that. And then I'm going to take this before layer and just drag and drop it into the after image. And I'm holding the shift key as I do so, so it'll go down in exactly the same position. And now with the after image, I'm going to target this text layer and with the text tool, just drag over it and just type after. But this will ensure that the two pieces of text are aligned over the top of each other in my animated GIF. Now I'm just going to flatten each of these images by clicking on the topmost layer and press Control or Command E. These are JPEG images and I'm not going to save them as such so that this text won't be permanently embedded in the image. It's just for the sake of creating my animated GIF. Now I'm going to the before image and I'm just going to drag and drop its background layer into my after image. And again, hold the shift key as I drop it so that it goes exactly into position. And now I can close without saving my before image because I don't need it any longer. In this image, I have two layers. I have the background layer, which is the after and the top layer, which is the before. I'm going to make the background into a regular layer and I can do that by just dragging and dropping its lock icon into the trash. So I have two layers here and I'm ready to create my animated GIF. I'm going to do that by choosing Window and then Timeline. In other versions of Photoshop, I'm using CC, but in other versions you may need to choose Animation, but I'm choosing Timeline. And here is my Timeline. And in the middle here, I have an option to create a video timeline or a frame animation. And I want a frame animation, so I'm going to click that to select it from the list and then click to create my frame animation. And Photoshop's gone ahead and added my first layer into this animation. But I want both layers in, so I'm going to target both layers. And from the drop down list here, I'm going to choose Make Frames from Layers and that adds the second image in. So now I've got two images on my timeline here. At the moment they're going to be displayed for zero seconds, so I'm going to click the time here and just set how many seconds they're going to display for. And I'm just going to set them for two seconds and then two seconds. And then I can select how much I want my GIF to play. So it can just play once or it can play three times or forever or I could set a custom range. I'm going to do forever. And what that means is it's just going to loop around. So now let's click to play it. It's going to stay on the screen for two seconds, switch on the screen for two seconds, switch. And I'll just click to stop. So that's what my animated GIF is going to look like. It's time now to go and save it. And to do this, we choose File and then Save for Web. In other versions of Photoshop, it might say Save for Web and Devices. Here it's critical that from this drop down list here you select GIF as the file format because GIF is the only format that you can create this animated effect using. You can't do it using a JPEG. 
Now what's going to happen is that this image is going to be set down to 256 colors in creating the GIF from it because that's the number of colors that you can have in a GIF image. But Photoshop does a pretty good job of still maintaining the consistency of the image. It's not an ideal production for a photograph, but we're creating an animated GIF and that's just one of the compromises we have to make. Now I'm choosing the same width and height as the original image and you can see that the looping options are set here. So all I need to do is to click Save. And I'm going to save it into a location that will allow me to find it again in a minute. So I'm just going to drop it into a folder that I have called AA Images. So I'm just going to drop it in here and I'm going to call it London Animation. And then click Save. Now this has now been saved as an animated GIF. To view it, I'm going to need something that will allow me to view an animated GIF. And the easiest way to view it is in a browser window. So let's go and get Chrome Browser. So here is my Chrome Browser and I can open a file just by pressing Control and the letter O. And that just opens my browser. So now I'm going to my folder and I'm just going to find my London image. Here's my London animation and click Open. And it opens inside the Chrome Browser. And Chrome is able to display animated GIFs. And so you can see that the image is now being animated inside the browser. And I could send that GIF image to anyone whom I wanted to see it. And the animation would play, provided their computer is capable of viewing animations. It would also, of course, display on a website as an animated GIF. I'm Helen Bradley. Thank you for joining me for this video tutorial. Look out for more video tutorials on my YouTube channel. And consider subscribing to my channel and you'll be alerted when new videos are released. And visit my website at projectwoman.com where you'll find more tips, tricks and tutorials on a range of applications, including Photoshop, Lightroom, Illustrator and a whole lot more.